What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. My name is Justin Skaggs and this is being brought to you by Webs Online. So we always love having Scott Warwick on the, uh, the show and today I wanted to discuss uh, the difference in climate. So Scott Warwick is a West Coast water garden supplier. So he goes in and he installs ponds. He's got a really interesting company where he actually deals with a lot of the Hollywood elite. And he's the guy in charge of some of the most beautiful ponds over on the West Coast. But he's from Ohio. So I just want to see what the main difference is. Let's see what the kind of like ecological difference is and, and what he has to deal with or maybe what he doesn't have to deal with that we all get annoyed by up here in the Northeast. Let's jump into it with Scott Warwick. Ladies and gentlemen, we have owner and operator of West Coast Water Garden, Scott Warwick on the line. And that kind of says it all, because uh, Scott, you know this, but to uh, anyone who's just joining us on this, on this call, we want to talk about the difference between the West Coast weather changes and how that affects the pond back from the East Coast. Because I think a lot of focus happens on the East Coast, but it's not like people on the West Coast are not making ponds. So I'm just gonna kind of kick it to you. You're not originally from the West Coast, you're from Ohio, right? That's correct. Yeah, so you know both angles. Uh, what is the main differences? What are well, they, rather? Well, from a service provider standpoint, I can, I'm can. one of the few places in the country where I'm fortunate enough I can work year round. I don't have to strap a snow plow on the window. In the, or in the winter, rather, and become Mr. Plow. Oh, is so, that a common uh, thing? Yeah, is that like is that like the the anti pond uh, month? Is snow plows and uh, um, snow removal? I don't know that it literally have to do that. I've heard stories though, you know. But obviously, you have to uh, account for the winter time, and not everyone has the luxury of taking three, three depending on where you're at, plus months off. If you're in Michigan, it could be more like four to six. So, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But um, the big thing here is there's no real overwintering of ponds. Uh, biological function slows down once the water gets down into the 50s, which it frequently does at nighttime here. Um, so as a service provider, it does become rather unpleasant, particularly in the morning. I've developed the, the bizarre knack for being able to determine the temperature of water within about two degrees of accuracy based on how painful it is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm priming up for the polar bear club or something. But again, I'm fortunate I can wear shorts year round. I still work. You don't have to shut filtration systems down to overwinter them, cut back on the feeding, uh, maybe switch to like, you know, the lower protein uh, winter food varieties. But, uh, for the most part, it's business as usual. The days are shorter, but again, with less biological function, plant growth and everything slows down, then uh, there's generally less work to do, so it all kind of balances out. So that's kind of like a out. kind of like a prolonged period of fall where, you know, for, for most of our people up in the Northeast, we, we talk about four seasons. You're basically talking about kind of two, right? Yeah, it's basically like our winter's mostly like the uh, East Coast autumns, you know, where it's gets warm during the day could even hit like 80 degrees sunny uh, more often times in the 60s or high 70s uh, but uh, at nighttime it can drop down into the 40s routinely so it, it's so the water temperature kind of averages out and obviously we said west coast but now now it should be clear that we're not talking about washington state you're gonna freeze a pond you know yeah, yeah. yeah you're talking about like the arid deserts of california like you know so more south and i think a lot of the people down in like North Carolina probably have to treat their ponds about the same way you would. If I'm, not, is that does that seem like a decent they get a longitude latitude thing down there? You always you always end up hearing about that. Uh, um, I don't know why that is, but uh, their, their climate they're subject to like getting below freezing. We rarely do, so uh, you know the the times that it snows in Atlanta, that type of thing. It always makes big news, but it's really not that infrequent to have that that sort of bizarre. We, we almost never get that once in a while. You'll have snow in the valley, but it's usually reserved to the mountains areas uh, just north of here. So. Okay, well, here's a poignant question. Do you even have de-icers stocked? <laughs> no. no. That's no. awesome. Dude, there's, some, there's some guy here right now who has three broken de-icers sitting in his garage who hates you. <laughs> yeah, I don't own one. I, none of my clients do. Again, we don't have to overwinter any filters. Everything's in motion all the time. So like you, uh, you mentioned something earlier, and this isn't really the focus of our podcast, but I think there's a lot of people out there who appreciate kind of a behind the scenes in terms of the business aspect, right? So 
Uh, there's a lot of do-it-yourselfers that uh, are interested in the professional aspect of things. So you said you handle clients year-round. Would you say that that would be a more economically sustainable business model for a professional pond installation company? Um, well, construction obviously continues year-round here too. Um, so yeah, there's no... Yeah, there's no slowdown period as far as around the holidays. People tend to tune out. Like I don't, the phone doesn't ring much as far as new clients, new business. That's customary, and I'm cool with that. I'd rather just tune out and attend to other things this time of year. But um, uh, particularly with the shorter days. But uh, but yeah, it's a fairly good business model. There's not a tremendous amount of people here that um, specialize exclusively with. Uh, pond work you know like there's a few of those aquascape endorsed companies around but uh a lot of them uh, have diversified like one of the leaders i'm not going to mention their name they've got into the whole outdoor living thing and they had a storefront locally lost it or gave it up um, you know the real estate's tremendously expensive so you, it's actual pond stores a few far between and you're not going to find them in the uh, city proper oh that's uh, interesting so it's more of a service industry than a brick and mortar yeah, and the construction is usually an extension of somebody who's a, like a landscape contractor. There's few people who are like exclusively dedicated to pond focus. That's really interesting. Well, hey, I want to say, uh, as always, thank you. You're one of our favorite guests. And uh, let's have you back in a couple weeks once things start to thaw out. And um, yeah, man, overall, uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you, all of the Californians out there listening? Okay, best way to find me is... Uh, Scott at westcoastwatergardens.com or just go straight to the website westcoastwatergardens.com. Um, I allegedly have a Facebook page, but uh, I don't log into there frequently. I'm not, I'm not a fan of social media, old school, I guess. But um, but that's the most direct way to contact me. Well, what about a phone number? You want to drop your line? If you're if you're old school, they can hit you up right direct. Fair enough. I still pick the phone up too, and that's pretty old school. So it's three two three three seven one three six five five. There you have it. There you have it. Hey, I appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. All right, everybody, that wraps up another episode of the podcast. I want to thank you so much for following us. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and jump right onto Webs Online. You can email us from there. You can call us from there. Talk to any of our technicians. And if you have any questions about what happened on this podcast, feel free to raise them with those fellows right over there at Webs Online. Till next time, take care and enjoy your pod.